Remember Warsaw? Turn around and look at me, you fuck! My friend, you are a dead man. Your cards mark termination with extreme prejudice. Hey guys, it's Will, Tong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for finding me. I hope everybody's doing well, having a good day, having a good week, having a good month, having a good year, whatever it is. Whatever your metric for measuring things is, I hope it's going well. Uh, if you could give us a sub, if you're new here, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Give us a comment, give us a thumbs up, all that fun stuff. I am here today with a movie review, more or less. I watched a movie last night. It was on Blu-ray. The movie is called Undeclared War. Hell yeah. So you know I'm on a Ringo Lamb page right now. That's my new expression, Ringo Lamb page, because I've been watching so many Ringo Lamb movies. So what I have here is a Blu-ray edition that was sent to me by Charles. If you saw my huge, huge, huge unboxing of like 50 plus movies that Charles was so, so kind to send to me from the other side of the world, uh, what an amazing person. And thank you so, so much. I'm getting like an insane amount of enjoyment out of going through these films. And when he sent me the package, he emailed me and he says, is there anything that you're looking for that's hard to find for you that I might be able to find for you? And one of the movies I listed was Undeclared War because I'm such a huge fan of Ringo Lamb. And I think there's only one like DVD edition of this film released um, in, uh, it's either the UK or the US. I don't know where it was released, but it's like pretty hard to find. It's pretty expensive when I do see it on eBay and stuff like that. So I listed this film and now I have this Blu-ray. So I watched it last night because I just watched Full Alert, the Eureka release, and I watched Touch and Go recently, um, you know, which is the Ringo Lamb film that Sam Hung is in, and I reviewed that, and I loved that so much, and I love Ringo Lamb in general so much. Wild Search is one of my favorite movies ever, which is right here, City on Fire. It's another one of my favorite movies ever, so I thought I would watch that, and then I would give you a review. So this is not really a Blu-ray review because there's not really anything on there. Um, except for the movie. I think the movie looks really good. It looks like a lot of these Hong Kong Blu-rays where there's not, I don't think there's a ton of work put into remastering it, but, and there's, you know, there are, it, it's inconsistent quality. Like some shots are kind of out of focus or less what like, it, it's like, and it's almost like they found a film print and scanned it and they didn't do anything to it. They just put it on a Blu-ray. That would be my guess of what that is because is some of it is like a little bit softer focus and like some of it is, uh, but it's in sections. It's not like one scene looks incredible, one scene looks like shit. It's like there's one section of the movie that's about 10 minutes long, I'm guessing, which would be like about a reel of film or so, if I'm not mistaken about how long reels are. And there's like a squiggle scratch at the top left corner of the screen, and it just stays there for like 8, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. And I'm like, okay, so that's it's probably like a scratch in one of the reels, and they just didn't fix it, right? But I might be wrong. It might be an upscale from another release, or it might be. I, I don't really know, but it looked good to me. I watched it on a 59-inch TV. So, um look out for that release if you're interested in this film. This movie came out in 1990, and it is an international co-production, which is really, really interesting. It's in, I think, four languages. Like, it's it, it mostly goes back and forth between English and Cantonese, but some of it is in Polish, and some of it is in Mandarin, because there's some of it takes place in mainland China, and the opening is set in Poland. So to give you a very brief synopsis of the plot, there's this international terrorist group who is kind of like a like Red Army faction, like Bader Meinhof kind of thing, like like radical left wing kind of, they're called the Liberation Army or something like that. And uh, they, the movie opens in Poland and there's uh, an attack of theirs. And then uh, we go to Hong Kong and the CIA and the Hong Kong police end up kind of butting heads over how to deal with a situation that has arisen in Hong Kong related to the same terrorist group. And then they go into mainland China and the mainland Chinese police become involved. And like all these different factions are kind of scrabbling for, you know, control and to be the first person to make an arrest and to try to bust these people. And it's a, the, the dynamics of it, the international dynamics of this film are really, really interesting. It is such a movie of that era. Like if you remember that era, like I was a kid during that era and like, the first news stories I remember watching on TV were like, you know, all these things about the 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 collapse of the Soviet Union, like the all these political shifts in the Eastern Bloc and um, the like the Gulf War, which I think is just like the year after this, like all that stuff is kind of what my first memories of like watching news on TV as a kid with my parents and stuff like that. And so this brought back a lot of memories to me of like this movie really, really deliberately and like on the nose touches upon 
the extreme anxiety and uncertainty of the capitalist countries like Hong Kong and like Hong Kong then still being a territory of Britain, right? Britain and America. And then China now being the only giant communist country. And then what's going to happen to all these countries like Poland and all these other former Soviet states that are now their own countries and how the political map is being redrawn and what the alliances will be. And um, the, this, the terrorist group is really, really interesting because a lot of them are just really, really bad people. But some of them really believe in what they're doing and they believe in the liberation of all peoples and they believe that capitalism is the great cause of so much suffering. So there's this, there's so much going on that is related to what was happening at that time. And there's like, people talk about AIDS and they talk about um, uh, like the Silicon Valley and the rise of personal computing like plays into this movie in that like the early, like the early 90s. Like there's so much stuff. It's so much a film of its time. And it so directly engages political and social issues of its time. It's really, really interesting. It's such a timepiece and there's a lot of nostalgia attached to it. I really enjoyed this movie. Now, um, it's not to me like top tier best Ringo Lamb films. I did actually read some negative criticism of this film that kind of surprised me. Like I thought people who liked action movies and thrillers would enjoy this because this is a very good action thriller. Like I said, it's not... It's not as good as like the best John Woo movies. It's not as good as the best Ringo Lamb films. Uh, but it's, I think it's a really solid, like I don't give movies grades and ratings, but I was thinking like if I had to grade this movie, I'd give it like a B minus maybe, like a B, B minus. Um, it's really, really entertaining and fun and engage me throughout the whole movie. Like the action scenes are amazing. Like I would say that these are, even though I think the, the, the movie as a whole does not rise to the level of the best Ringo Lamb films, I think the action films are as good as, as Ringo Lamb's best, or the action scenes, excuse me, as good as Ringo Lamb's best action scenes. I've seen this movie kind of derisively called a ripoff of the Day of the Jackal, and I think that that's kind of, it's kind of an ignorant way to look at it in a way because it has elements of the Day of the Jackal in the guy who's the leader of the terrorist group, but to me, I see, I mean, I'm a huge Lethal Weapon fan, right? And this movie, it, around the midpoint, kind of becomes a buddy cop movie between the um, the CIA agent and the uh, the Hong Kong cop. And the Hong Kong cop is, I should tell you about the cast of this movie too, because the cast of this movie is amazing. Danny Lee is the main Hong Kong cop. Tommy Wong is his like right hand man who's, if you don't know his name, you will, he's been in like a hundred movies. He's in City on Fire. He's in Prison on Fire. He's in all like the Ringo Land movies. He's in Wild Search. He's in um, Touch and Go. And he's in like, he's in The Killer. He's like in a lot of those John Woo movies. Like he's in everything from that era. And you will recognize him like in an instant. Um, Rosamund Kwan is in this movie. She plays a reporter who is the girlfriend of the Danny Lee character. And then uh, the villain is played by, wait for it, Vernon Wells. Hell yes, from Commando and also uh, Road Warrior, right? Like that guy's like, he's such a good villain. He's so good in this movie. I'm just looking at my notes to see who else is in the cast. Oh, right. So o Olivia Hussey is in this movie. Hussey, Hussey, I don't know how to pronounce it, but she played Juliet in the Zeffirelli Romeo and Juliet when she was like a teenager. And then she was in Black Christmas, which is like the first ever slasher movie. So she's been in like some really, really awesome stuff. And then Mars is in this movie. So you obviously will recognize him. And then Peter Liapis, or Li Liapis, or I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he plays the... Um, the CIA agent, and he's he's very good, and I don't, I'm not familiar with his work at all, but I really liked him in this movie, and his character really reminded me of Riggs, to go back to the Lethal Weapon thing. Like like I said, it becomes kind of a buddy cop movie about the midway point. Danny Lee has a girlfriend, he wears suits to work, he's like an upstanding citizen, he wants to do the right thing, he's very clearly like the Murtaugh character, and the CIA guy is very much like a Riggs type, but... It has, there are other elements to it that remind me of Lethal Weapon too, because Lethal Weapon has that whole international kind of terrorism thing with those guys who are bringing stuff from, not to spoil the plot for you, but if you haven't seen Lethal Weapon, now stop watching this video and go and watch it. But like in Lethal Weapon, there are people who are bringing drugs from like Southeast Asia into Los Angeles, and there's this kind of international terrorism, um, like drug trade kind of element, like post-Vietnam kind of like tapped into politics and global events in the same way that this movie has tapped into politics and global events. I also saw a lot of red heat in this movie in that you have people from very different cultures trying to come together in the, I mean, red heat is more about the cold war. What is this is a post Soviet era, uh, but red heat, you know, opens in Russia and then it moves to the U S and it has these two guys who are kind of butting heads, but have to try to find a way to work together. And they have different goals in a way. 
they're approaching the same goal from very different perspectives, right? And this is something similar is going on here where you have the opening in Poland, right? And then you go to uh, Hong Kong and then, you know, the CIA guy that shows up and they're butting heads and they, they have to kind of try to find a way to work together. So I, I, I think that this movie takes a lot of influence from a lot of different films of that era. If you're looking for like a single kind of thing of like, what is this movie really like in terms of tone, action, plot, quality, the thing, the kind of the comparison that that I came up with that it, I think is most appropriate is early Seagal, like the really good Seagal movies, like the first five, six, whatever Seagal movies, like Above the Law, you know, Mark for Death, Out for Justice, like those movies, because it has that kind of like B movie quality, but it's really good, like really good action. Like the story of this movie, I really liked because it's very unpredictable because it's not just like. Okay, here we go. We have a goal. We're going to try to achieve the goal and we're going to walk from point A to point B and it's going to be over, right? There's all these different factions of characters and even within factions, there are factions. Like, so within the terrorists, you have these really bad people who only care about money and you have true believers and that's two factions within a faction and they want different things and it's the same thing in and i'm not going to try i'm going to try really hard not to spoil anything here but within like the cia right the cia agent is working with a u.s diplomat right the diplomat obviously does not want an international incident the cia guy and there's more going on with the cia guy's backstory but i don't want to kind of spoil it all for you but he ends up being like kind of like he really crosses a lot of lines in a lot of scenes but when you know why he's doing what he's doing he's not you understand him he's a very human character he's very relatable he's not just like this wild pig running around destroying everything in his path like he's doing it for a reason and when you get the reason even though he crosses the line the cia does not is not portrayed well here but it's interesting because it's not like one of these films you know you see a lot of these films where america's like the bad guy and they're like really bad and they don't care about anything right and there's actually a really funny line in this movie where where the, the, the tommy wong character says to the cia agent you sound like your president mr george bullshit <laughs> i thought that was really funny but you, you know like everyone in this movie is a little bit bad and a little bit good in classic wrinkle land fashion it's not just like evil cia it's like the the Kind of like the terrorist people are horrible and even within the terrorist faction the people who are more humane and really believe that they're trying to liberate humanity they do some pretty bad stuff and they believe that it's in the call in the name and the cause of of fighting for rights for everyone but it's not you know it's not they're not good people in a way they believe in good things but they're corrupted right and within the cops there's good people and bad people and you know like all of these factions have their own factions within them and it's not just we're walking from point A to point B kind of movie. It's like everyone's desires disrail the trajectory of everyone else's plans. And the movie is like flying all over the place. I really like movies like that. Some people might find it to be a little too busy. They just want to see like, okay, there's the criminal, go get him, fight, done. I really like the, wait, what just happened? Oh, and now we're over here and now we're over here. Like it's unpredictable that makes it interesting. I've actually talked to Arne Venema about that before. Like one of the things about Hong Kong cinema that often makes it so unique and so much different from other cinema cultures is that it's very unpredictable storytelling. And I really appreciated that element of this film. So that's like a basic like a good basic summary of this movie it's got a lot of really good shootouts it's got a lot of fight scenes amazing locations everywhere like i said poland hong kong mainland china like it's super super cool to see all of these places preserved on film at that point in time like as these these countries are really emerging from one historical era into another and there's a, there's there's discussion of the handover in hong kong here too and like worries about the economic future of hong kong as it reverts to china and like there's a British guy who's like in charge of all the Hong Kong cops who's kind of stuck between the CIA and the Hong Kong cops and the British government. And like there's a lot of really interesting geopolitical stuff going on that is, like I said, so much of that era. Um, I always like to discuss the morality in Ringo Lamb's films. I just knocked my pen over by throwing my notebook because I'm done with my notes because we're just getting into the last part of this video. But um, there's, a, there's a baptism scene early on in this film that takes place in Poland, which if you know, Poland is a Catholic country. And so... You're in a Catholic church and there's a baptism happening and the baptism is, you know, like the child entering kind of the covenant with God or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, your hope that the child will live a blessed life and a pure life and a good life. And they're looking up at this giant painting in the Church of Christ being cru on the cross, right? And the image of Christ on the cross is this really interesting uh it, it it's the worst of humanity and the best of humanity happening simultaneously because christ was betrayed he was crucified like all these horrible things but 
Christ was also this very loving, kind, uh, selfless person who died for people's sins and like was willing to give up his own life with the hopes of saving humanity right and so you have this juxtaposition and and throughout this film you have this kind of moral juxtaposition of of people kind of caught between what is the well you know like there are people who believe they're doing the right thing what is the right thing to do and then also the very worst of humanity these terrorists who only care about money and these people who only care about revenge and violence and, and aren't thinking about what why they're doing what they're doing and there's like torture scenes in this movie and it's it has very 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 dark bleak moments but it also has very human characters and that sense of morality of like the, these endless gray areas of like i said factions within factions and people believing different things and how that affects what they do but it's a world of they live in a world of violence and is there a way to stop that violence can they escape that violence like are they being naive in believing that they can never make a difference or maybe they're not trying to make a difference they're just out for themselves and is that cynicism worse than the naivety that leads to the terrorist actions of the other people there's a lot of really interesting moral questions flying around in this film but like i said it, it's to me this is not like a top top tier ringo lamb film which for me would be like city on fire wild search um uh full alert like touch and go like those like uh, those types of movies and touch and go obviously is much more lighthearted than this film but it's just so good right i would say this is like a kind of like a second tier ringo lamb film but it's very very fun like if you're looking for just like a violent early 90s like seagal red heat lethal weapon style action buddy cop international kind of like terrorist movie this is a really solid entertaining film and as always with Ringo Lamb if you want to read more into it if you want if you're like interested by the geopolitics if you got that nostalgia hit of like growing up in that era then I think you'll really like this film so my name is Will it's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society it's Undeclared War released in 1990 directed by Ringo Lamb and uh, we'll see you next time